Hey guys, how are you doing? Welcome to the 10th video of the e-commerce with Golang backend project series. So in this video, um, we'll work on our controllers.go file. And I wanna finish the hash password verify password and the search function quickly. These are quick, easy functions. So, and we've already hash password, verify password. You've already seen those in the JWT authentication tutorial series. We've already used these functions here. We're calling this function from sign up and login. So I thought why not just like finish the, these off quickly. Uh, before I even start doing this, I want to first obviously define the user collection uh, and the product collection in my file to begin with. Okay. And uh, You've seen that I have called validate function quite a bit here, right? So this validate function comes from validator package and dot new function is a function that's given to us by the validator package and basically creates a new uh, instance of the validator. So here for importing, let me import a couple of packages that I know that I use, which one will be context then you have your FMT, your log, your net slash. Here should be just the, the usual suspects, you know, that you would, that you would expect in a uh, program like this. You need all these, obviously, and uh, you need the validator one. So that's the most important one for me right now. So I'll say github.com slash go playground slash. Just make sure the spelling, you get the spelling right. Or you can just go over to Google and then search for it and copy and paste the actual path. Um, go playground validator and slash v10, okay? <clears throat> now, uh, for your user collection, how do you create it? So firstly, user collection is of type mongo.collection. Now, when I say mongo.collection, I also need the mongo package here, obviously. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say go.mongodb or I can just go to cart.go and just copy and paste these quickly. You know, why do I have to write again? So I need these three packages, right? So I'll go here. I'll just copy and paste these quickly out here. So I need primitive, I need uh, mongo and I need Python. So let me press tab to get the spacing correct. And there you have it. So uh, I was saying that user collection type of mongo collection. Similarly, product collection is also of type mongo.collection, okay? Here you'll say database dot user data. So database is your package database that exists here, the database folder, and here somewhere you'll have this function called user data, and you'll say database dot client comma users with a capital U. Here you'll say product data database dot client comma products with a capital P. And you already have the validate variable. Now to hash your password. Right, so we've called the hash password. Whenever you want to store the password in the database, you don't want to just store it like that. You want to hash it always so that nobody can just go and get access to your database and get access to all those passwords. So you always want to hash it. How do you hash it? Hash it. You use something called as a bcrypt package. Now, if you want to use the bcrypt package, you obviously want to import it here. So you'll say golang, get the spelling right, golang.org slash x slash crypto slash bcrypt awesome so here you have bcrypt and you get a function called generate from password you pass here a slice of bytes pass the password here and you say 14 so 14 character long will be your hash and you'll get that in bytes and so here you'll say if error is not equal to nil, that means if there was some error uh, that you got while running this bcrypt function, then you want to say log dot panic error. Otherwise, you just want to return this hash, which is return string and bytes. Awesome. So your hash password uh, function is done. Now you want to work on the verify password function. 
Verify password function, always when the user is trying to log in, he gives you a password and you check that with the password that you get from the backend, uh, from your database. You wanna see, you wanna compare if these two passwords are correct or not. Now the user sends the password that he understands and from the database we get the password that we had hashed by storing uh, this user, we had hashed it, right? Because we don't want to just store the password uh, as the user had sent it. So now we want to unhash it, we want to compare it, and we want to say, yes, your password is verified. That's what we want to do. So here you want to uh, use the bcrypt package, and you want to say compare hash and password byte. And you get something called as the given password, comma byte. So we're gonna compare both of the password, the one that the user gives you, the user, and the one that exists in the database, you wanna compare both of them. And you do that with the help of the compare hash and password uh, function that the bcrypt package gives you, which we've already installed, and we've already used that package in the hash password function. And you wanna handle the error that you get here. Now you say valid is a flag that you define as true and the, by default message you define it as empty, just empty like that. And if you get an error, so if error is not equal to nil, you want to put the message as login or password is incorrect. And you want to say valid is equal to false and you're gonna return a valid from message awesome so your hash password and verify password are done now let's work on our search product function with the search product function all i want to do is i want to just get all the list of all the products in my database in just one go that's what i want to do with the search product function um it sounds simple and it is a simple function. It returns uh, a gen dot handler func. So firstly, what we have to do is we have to say return func c star gen dot context. It returns a function. Now, uh, the list of the products that exist in my database, all of the list, the complete list of the, all the products. I want to be able to um, first keep it in a variable. So that variable is going to be called product list. And I need, I need Golang to be able to understand it, right? Golang doesn't understand directly what it gets from the database because what you get from the database is MongoDB, uh, the database is MongoDB. What you get is JSON. So Golang doesn't understand JSON. So you wanna first uh, create a variable called product list and it needs to be something that Golang understands. So Golang, for Golang to understand what a product is, we have already defined that in our models. So if you go over to our, sorry, this is going to be P capital and everything else small. If you go over to our models, you will see that product has already been defined by us as a struct. So, and structs are something that Golang understands. Structs are uh, the default data, uh, sorry, the new data types that we create on our own by using default data types that Golang already understands. So we create like collections of different data types and create our own new data type using that collection. So that's uh, how you define product list, which is a variable, which is a slice of type different products. So product list is going to have multiple products of, and each product is a struct, which has all those different values that you just saw in the models. And that's what I wanted to show you. So here you want to first set the context because eventually you want to call a database function. For that you need to set your timeout. Timeout is set with using the context dot background package function. Sorry, and we'll give it a time of hundred seconds. So it's time dot second. Awesome. And we put it for cancel. And here. I want to say product collection dot. So you already use the find function, right? If you are, if you have some uh, base, if you know some basics of uh, MongoDB, you already know that find is a function, and in the find function for that MongoDB, you pass an empty query. When you pass an empty query, it returns everything that a database has in that particular collection. I want to capture that in a variable called cursor. So now from this function, we'll get back all the uh, data in our product collection and I'm uh, holding that in a variable called a cursor. And I will also handle the error. So if error is not equal to nil, I'm going to say dot indented JSON, <coughs> HTTP dot status internal server 
error comma something went wrong please try after some time and you return from that now you know say cursor dot all context comma and product list Again, handle the error. So if error is not equal to nil, I'm gonna say log dot print ln error, and you wanna abort the entire program with a particular status. Status will be HTTP dot internal server error, but you really need to pass something as a text here for the error, and you return from here. Okay, and you'll say defer cursor dot close. And now you'll see cursor dot header. You know. Say header is not equal to nil. And log dot print error, error, and you want to say invalid c dot indented JSON. I'm gonna pass 400 comma invalid, and you want to return from here. At the end, if everything goes right, <clears throat> you want to send the product list. So it's c dot indented. JSON 200 comma product list is what you want to return from here. So one small thing that needs to be changed is this list L becomes smaller because it's the same product list that is being used out here. And um, as you know that uh, we call this database level function to find using an empty query it returns all the products in the database to us but all of them will be in the json format so all of the json is stored in cursor now cursor needs to uh, we want to run this function cursor.all and convert all the data uh, using product list into product list which will basically be models.product which is something that golang understands so you already know that golang doesn't understand json we want to have we are going to have to convert it into proper structured data that we have defined the struct for which have defined in our models and the product struct right so we'll get the slice here a slice of products right the way we've defined it so we'll get structured data here uh, in product list and that's the product list that we want to uh, return here at the end with the 200 status makes sense we're also checking for error somewhere in between here and that's what's happening with the search product function all that this function is doing is just returning all of the products from our database to the front end that's about it so thank you for watching this video and do subscribe to this channel in case you um, you know haven't subscribed already so that you come to know when the next video of this series comes out thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video